Well, Hurricane Lee now rapidly intensifying. I want to show you the water vapor loop. You can clearly see the eye right in the center of where you have all the clouds. That tells us that this system continues to strengthen. Now, you're looking at the water vapor loop, and what I'm showing you is, and this is interesting, you have dry air on the eastern side and the western side. Of the, of the Hurricane Lee, but you notice that the dry air is not coming in toward the center at all. In fact, it's being pushed away. Uh, oftentimes, the strengthening hurricanes create their own environment for development. That's exactly what's happening with Lee, and it is going to be going into some conditions that are, let's say, pristine for development. What do I mean by that? I'm looking at very warm water temperatures. In fact, we're looking at water temperatures 86 to 90 degrees. There's abundant moisture, there's not gonna be any dry air, and almost zero wind shear, and we never say that. Zero wind shear. This is gonna explode, and I promise you this, by Friday afternoon, if not earlier, you're gonna see what will be an awe-inspiring but frightening satellite picture of Lee where you have that eye in the middle of the clouds and it's gonna have that stadium effect. When you look down to it, it looks like you're looking into a stadium. That's what it's gonna look like. Now, the movement then to the west-northwest. So what I wanted to do is one of the indicators that I always look at when we're forecasting, where's this storm gonna go? I always like looking at history. I always like looking at history to give you an idea of what normally happens. So what we did was we took the location of this storm when it's Category 4, Category 5, north of the Virgin Islands, and we said, okay, for the history of our storm tracks, when we had a major hurricane in this exact location or near this location, where did the storms go? And this is the graphic we came up with. And what it shows is the, pre the predominantly most of the storms in this part of the Atlantic Basin that are major hurricanes during the month of September, most of these storms are out to sea. Now I'm gonna draw on this. Most of them are out to sea, but not all of them. Some of them move to where, where? It's interesting. The Outer Banks of North Carolina, Nova Scotia, and Northern New England. This is the area that this time of the year, we tend to get at least some direct impacts from where the storm is located now. So remember that. The Outer Banks, North Carolina, and Nova Scotia. History tells us, although it's a small chance, it's not a zero chance that that can occur. With that in mind, I want to show you the two scenarios for what's going to happen with this system. Scenario number one, high pressure continues to steer this, Lee, no problem. But here's the big uh, impact this next trough coming into the northeast Thursday and Friday. Where is it? Is it strong? Is it weak? How far east is this going to be? One scenario has this trough coming on in, fast moving, comes in, and it just steers uh, Lee out to sea, just like we saw with the historic tracks, right? Out to sea, most of the direct impacts well offshore. The only impact we'd be looking at is rough, uh, rough seas and dangerous rip currents. That's what we're going to have. That is one scenario that is on the board. But there's also a scenario this trough's a little farther west. And if it's farther west, then it's gonna be able to draw Lee closer to the United States. Note the area that I've highlighted. It's no coincidence when we looked at the, uh, the history. Where, uh, historically, the storms where Lee is right now, where it will be, where do they tend to hit? If they do hit, Outer Banks of North Carolina, Northern New England, Nova Scotia. That's the area we've highlighted. This is where, not that we're looking for a landfall, but this is where we're looking for direct impacts, wind and rain. Now, I will tell you, of this area right now, it is New England. From Cape Cod, let's say from uh, Cape Cod toward Nova Scotia, that will have the highest threat of an impact. The one area that we might clear, but it's, I think it's too early, is this zone here from the Outer Banks, North Carolina, and New Jersey. That is the area we're going to look at. We're not going to clear it now. It's too early. Meanwhile, southeast North Carolina, all the way toward Florida, you're in the clear from direct impacts. That means wind and rain. So this is the area we're highlighting right now from a historical perspective and what we're looking at as far as meteorology is concerned. This is where you have to be concerned of a direct impact, wind and rain. But of that area, it is this zone in New England that has the higher probability. Now, regardless, as I mentioned, regardless of what happens with this, we want to let you know this is what you need to know. This is going to be a powerful hurricane. This is going to be a Category 5 hurricane. By the way, we were the first to predict the Category 5 hurricane. 
it's going to end up happening. Now, again, odds favor this staying east of the United States. New England, you have to be careful, but I think odds favor this staying east of the United States. The question is this, how far west can it come? And right now, right now, Outer Banks, North Carolina, toward Nova Scotia for some impacts. Regardless, dangerous surf and dangerous rip currents. All next week, from Florida all the way up toward Maine. Stay with AccuWeather.com.